I'm Rob. Along with Tracy and a few furry dogs and this old bus, we make up Tango Romeo 87. Our whole idea in this series is to be as detailed as possible so that if you're building a bus or thinking about building a bus, you can see what you're getting yourself into and which way you're going to go. So follow along, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Hey, we need subscribers and I'm not afraid to ask for subscribers. Subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing to subscribe. So you want to watch this video and follow along as we cover more foundational basics in the bus building. Today we're going to talk about foundational basics. The foundation we're talking about in this video is the living space foundation. No different than a house. You take the time to lay a good foundation so that you have a solid house that can weather the storms and it'll last for years with low maintenance. We took a coarse wire brush on a grinder and we covered this entire floor time and time again until we ended up with a polished finish, factory finish. So now we're ready to seal it and paint it. We're going to continue in this video talking about the foundation that you're going to build your house on. Take the time to do your floors right. Once rust starts, it really continues to grow. So we took a wire brush and we cleaned the rust time and time again until we got it down to a bare metal finish. Now we'll still use that uh, rust converter as a primary coat before we put a couple coats of rust oil on the floor. But you've got a bare bone structure now. You've got the walls out, you've got the insulation out, you've got the ceilings out, you've got the floors down to the bare metal. This is where you want to spend your time. It's the cheapest part of your build, but it's also the dirtiest and most time consuming that you can have. I think I said in the last video, I'll probably have about 30 hours wrapped up in just the floor. Also, once I got everything done and I got it ground down, we'll cover in this video how we're filling the holes in the floor. We use a JB Weld metal stick that we clean really well. And uh, we put that in and once it sets and hardens, we take a grinder wheel and cut that off just to shape it like metal and that fills all the holes so we can keep water from intruding again. So if you have a YouTube channel or you have an Instagram account, um, put a comment down in the bottom of our YouTube and tell us what your YouTube channel is. If it's schooly related, we want to see what you're doing. We want to see your channel. Um, we'll subscribe to your channel and see what you're doing while you go through your bus build. Eventually, we're all going to meet out on the road anyway, so uh, we might as well start this friendly community now. So come on. Let's uh, Let's watch this video and uh, see how this foundation's coming along. Welcome back to the Tango Romeo channel. Today we're going to continue what we've been doing. Uh, we got a little bit of work in through the week getting these floors prepped. We're taking up this last rubber mat in the front behind the driver's seat, between the driver's seat and the wheel well. And as you can see here, we found a lot of uh, water had been under. You know, we had a debate whether we were going to <clears throat> pull up the driver's seat and take all the matting off the stairs or try to leave that there. We've kind of talked back and forth on it. But as you can see, this surface rust looks pretty bad, but it's not as bad as it looks on film when you can put your hands on it. Because once again, we have a quarter inch, almost a quarter inch plate steel floor in this bus and no plywood. So it's a really solid foundation. But as you can see, the water damage goes clear up under the driver's seat. We're gonna to have to take all of that out, prep all of those floors up there, paint those and redo those too. So today is gonna to be more of the same thing, working on floors. What I wanna cover is foundation. I see so many debates in the Facebook and Instagram groups and, and posts that, hey, we got our bus, our floors look great, um, we're going to leave the rubber mats down and just uh, put some snap lock flooring in because everything's great in the bus. And <laughs> listen, let's talk about foundation for a minute. Take the time to pull your floors up. Start at the foundation and work your way back on your bus build. Don't try to save time. If you're trying to save time and, and get to the part that everybody wants to see. We all want to see plywood going down. We all want to see cabinets going in. We want to see a nice couch. We want to uh, see a bus. We want to show everyone our bus. We want to have a nice ceiling in our bus. But you're skipping the foundation. When you build a house, you don't get in a hurry and just say, well, you know what, we'll just build this on the ground and we'll stack some cinder blocks up and, and put it on that and we'll have a house. And the first big storm that comes through, the ground gets saturated with water, the house starts to sink. In a bus, the foundation is the flooring. 
If there's rust now, it only gets worse over time. Rust continues to work against you. So you build a great bus and then a year or two down the road, you have to start tearing out all the nice things you did to get your foundation back. So don't shortcut in the beginning. I mean, Tracy and I are in a hurry. We want to see this bus done. We want to be able to use it if a hurricane comes, but we may have to get one of those cheap hotel rooms if we have to evacuate for a hurricane this year because we refuse to rush the bus. Uh, we found a leak up here around the hatch and it looks like they put the screws in maybe at an angle when they originally built the bus. So you know that's been leaking for 10 years, 15 years, 20, maybe the whole 30 years that this bus has been around. So now we're going to take a fine wire brush and clean the ceiling all around that area. When we go up and, and strip the roof of the bus off and, and sand that down, we'll uh, reseal all that with new butyl tape. We'll put RV tape around it and make sure that that's sealed because I noticed when I came in this morning there was a drip in the floor. I'm going to get back on the floors today. I'm going to pull this last piece of rubber out of here completely and see what we've got. Nothing concerns me. As you see the parts we've done in the back here, when we took the knotted wire brush on the grinder and cleaned this floor, which is a lot of hours worth of work, and you're down on your hands and knees, it sucks. I mean, it's, it's probably going to be the worst job on the bus, maybe next to sand and the whole outside of it. We've got one more small section right here in front of the door, about eight inches wide, about 24 inches long to run the grinder on. And then everything behind the driver's seat is done. Well, whew, everything behind the driver's seat is done. Now I'll get broom, start sweeping this mess up, and then I'm going to get the uh, Rowdy One leaf blower, blow the extra dust out of here, and that's that for now. <laughs> Tell you what, when y'all go to cleaning the floors, remember, you're building the foundation for your house. So take care, do it right. Anywhere you had the heavy rust at, where our mat was glued directly to the metal and not through plywood, you had glue build up around and you had to remove all. So it took anywhere you had a, a heavy scale, it was a lot of work, but worth it. We'll have this thing ready to uh, prime by probably midday tomorrow. Then we can move on to something a little more exciting. But the whole point of this video was to show you how to prep the floors. Don't shortcut guys. I know you're in a hurry. You want those cabinets in, you want the lights in, you want to be on the road. Don't shortcut it. Do your best right. Well, let's get this cleaned up. All right, I got the leaf blower in here. Blew all the dust off of everything, the floors. Got it out of the cracks. Um, we'll vacuum before we're done. But that's it. The floors are done with the grinder. And now we're going to clean them up and get our putty in. For now, I'm gonna go take a shower and run to Home Depot and get a few things.
Hey guys, let's get started. It's Sunday, the floors are all grounded and sanded and ready to uh, fill holes. So we're going to cover that today. We're going to cover what the importance is of uh, having a good foundation, having a good clean surface for adhesion so that you don't have problems in the future. First, let me put these drinks in the cooler and then we'll get started. Today we're going to talk about patching the holes in the floor. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can weld all the holes filled. Um, I've seen people take pennies and glue them to the floor, which is a very bad idea because two types of metal in contact with one another always lead to corrosion. Sure, the surface is painted and hopefully there's no open non-painted areas down inside the wells of that hole because if corrosion can get started, it'll get under the paint, it'll remove the paint. You're looking for a disaster in my opinion. In order to do it the way we're going to do it, we're going to use a JB Weld metal stick. And we're going to fill the holes and then clean them up. To do that, first you need a good degreaser. I like a ZEP product. You mix that with a little bit of water in a bucket. Then you'll need some sort of small round brush that'll fit down in the holes. You'll dip it in your solution clean and that kind of degreases everything. Dry rag, wipe everything off. Next step, spray it with a little bit of brake parts cleaner. This will remove all of the moisture and all the rest of the soap and clean that really good. Then you'll need your JB Weld Stick, which is just a two-part stick that you cut slices off of, mix together, and put in the hole. Little suggestion before we go further, and I'll cover this again. Cut a very small amount, mix it, and fill it. About two holes is all you're going to do at the same time because this stuff sets up very, very quick. But your hole will be clean. We'll water it in a little ball, stuff it down in the hole, make sure it gets on the edges, let it sit. Once that's done, we'll take the angle grinder, grind everything flat and smooth to the floor. This time we're using a regular grinding disc and not a little thin cutting disc. So we'll go over this step by step and show you how we get the holes filled in the floor because that's very important to keep water out from underneath the floors you're about to put in. Okay, here's our first set of holes. As you can see, we've got crap down in these holes that we're going to try to get cleaned out. So we'll take a little bit of this solution. We'll uh, clean that hole. Get as much of the grease and grime as we can out of those holes. All right, scrub the floor off. Still a good amount in there. Got moisture. Now the brake clean is, will clean anything off. Make sure you're in a well ventilated area with a fan running. Take a rag, wipe off the brake clean. And then we'll let that set up and we'll start to uh, fill holes. Using the JB Weld Stick is a pretty simple process. You just want to cut off enough for two holes. So that really should do it. It's black in the middle, gray around the edges. So you just need this until it becomes a uniform color. You don't have a whole lot of time to work with it because it sets up pretty daggone quick. Just knead it, smash it together, roll it. Um, once it starts getting warm, you better be done with it. I divide that in two then and stick it in a hole. All right, we'll fill in the rest of these holes and uh, get going on this bus. Okay, 
Well, that's what it looks like once all the holes are filled. Um, some of these have a little bit too much around the edge. They're already um, setting up. Don't get in a hurry. Give it a couple hours before you run the grinder on it. But those holes are filled and ready to be ground off after a while. So I'm going to go down one whole side of the bus and uh, get it done, let it start setting, and then I'll start down the other side of the bus. The steel stick is done. I used five packages of steel stick and I still have everything on the left side of the bus past uh, the wheel well to get done. But I'm gonna go ahead and grind off the ones in the front now because they're set up enough. And then I'm gonna call today. I'm tired, I think I'll go in and take a shower, take a nap, and take the rest of the afternoon off. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon now on Sunday. So I put in a hard weekend and worked every night through the week. So I'm just gonna kind of knock off now. But I'll show you how I grind these off because you don't want to grind them all the way. You just want to grind them until they're rounded and leave a little bit on the floor. So. All right, so here's how the JB Weld steel stick looks once it's on there. It sticks up a little bit. I want to get a grind on it to get it smooth where my foam board will lay down smooth and also I can get paint and everything else on the floor. Okay, as you can see, I've left a little bit around the edges in the unfilled areas. Kind of gives it a little bit of strength to stay. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these ground off and then clean up and call it a day.